right? There's a vaccine shared, but be in our department. We have a beautiful talks, some talks in the last few days. We got concerned about physics and not physics. And uh, not physics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a few words on our speaker today. He graduated in Moscow. Please correct me if I'm wrong. He graduated in Moscow. He got the PhD in 1999 in Moscow. And after a, a postdoc period in Japan, is now a research director in the National uh, Research Center in Tineras. In Tours, and he's now uh, currently working in the Institute, Institute of East Boston yeah. in Tours. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it also actually uh, currently uh, he holds a grant in Timisoara University in Romania, yeah. in which he works uh, on vorticity in a core room plasma. By the way, among his numerous interests, I mean, condensed matter physics, general physics, and gravity. Uh, what does the talk of today talk about? He just wants to basically answer a, a brief question. We know many materials, we see this uh, very strange behavior under, under magnetic fields. And the, the general answer is what happens to the, I would say, emptiest matter of all, that is the vacuum itself, when under some magnetic fields? In particular, the answer is going to. Uh, Convey today with this talk is does the vacuum exhibit superfluidity and supercompatibility when under uh, strong magnetic fields? Is numerical information analytical calculations will try to answer this question. In order to get the answer, indeed, please, I shall leave the microphone to you. Perfect work. Yeah, perfect, perfect. No, the, the pointer. Ah, oh, I think so. Yeah, it, po it points. Very nice. Please. Okay, thank you, Gabriel. Yeah, thank you. So I'm starting. Is it not too loud? No, to me it looks like very loud. No, it's fine. Okay. So. Okay, okay, okay. So I will be staying here. Yeah. So I will be talking about some controversial stuff a little bit. So imagine that it's it's written written. It's it's, it's actually transparency number zero. So it will be number one soon. Uh, so the title is the following: solidifying vacuum. Phase structure of the electronic model in strong magnetic field. But I will be talking about vacuum, about nothing. So the statement which you can find, you know, that Cora de la Serra, I don't know, some you know, maybe some other paper, you know, kind of newspaper written somewhere in the back that okay. So just very strange statement. So I will take nothing. So I will be talking about some nothing, most nothing which you can. You remove everything, air, everything, you can vacuum, only quantum fluctuations, nothing more. And I will be trying to solidify it in terms of vortex, solid, liquid. You know, vortex, solid, liquid. You know, solid, liquid is something. It's not like solid, liquid of the uh, liquid crystal. It's different, you know, the screen. And this thing will possess superconductivity and superfluidity. So it will show dissipationless transport. And that will be done from nothing, from vacuum. And to this end, you need only one thing, just magnetic field. So it looks like very strange because people discuss, you know, very specific materials, you know, some high temperature superconductivity, uh, some very good stuff, which is very unusual, ceramics, doped, and so on. Here I'll be talking about basically nothing. <laughs> and it looks like really crackpot theory because I just said, okay, just put magnetic field. But it's not crackpot. It was published in PRL uh, actually one, one year ago. And we're still right now working about this. Uh, we have some new results, which I will present here, but it's kind of material, which kind of thing, which uh, I hope that it's, at some point it will explode because it's something which is, okay, I'm too close probably to micro. Yeah, so, uh, so the general idea will be to check emergence of so-called superconducting phase uh, due to vacuum instability and strong magnetic field background. So this scientific title, but in reality, just to take nothing, the vacuum apply magnetic field and you get very strange matter from nothing. Uh, basically, we can tell that uh, uh, virtual particles which appear in the vacuum will pop up from the vacuum and will make something. So you take nothing and you get with magnetic field something. Of course, you can ask the question what kind of uh, results, what kind of magnetic fields you need. I will tell about this right now shortly after. And I would like to say that these are just results of first principle numerical simulations. It's not like something like theoretical analysis in the you know in the clouds. It just we basically do numerical simulations of the results which we could 
uh, get otherwise uh, analytically. And we disproved many, many people who worked a lot. Some people say nothing like this exists, it's just uh, how to say it correctly, nothing. <laughs> I choose the correct words in this audience, but it's just forget about that. And there are some Nobel Prize winners who wrote about this. People give up, or maybe there will be future ones. So, okay, I will just talk about this later. So let me talk about scales of magnetic field. To me, the first scale of magnetic field is uh, one Tesla. It's not a car, it's just one field, it's just uh, some 10,000 uh, 10, uh, Gauss. That's the field which you can find in loudspeaker or NMR imaging in the hospital, basically. In the hospital, actually, they use two Teslas, but scale is approximately one Tesla, basically. And in loudspeaker, here we have some loudspeakers here hidden just approximately one Tesla um, solid uh, magnet there, or kind of AC magnet there. So it's like that. So it's one Tesla, it's typical scale for us. Since I will not go through all of uh, this stuff, for example, I can think, I can say also just before that we are thinking right now and our field by generated by our brain is 10 to minus 12 Tesla. So it's, we are right now thinking also making magnetic field, but it's too, too, too low scale for us. So we will start with one Tesla. Then next step is uh, to consider, of course, I will consider field theory, uh, quantitative theory. So for me, it's important to consider fields uh, in the order of typical magnitude of the um, theories which we work with. Next theory, which also works, for example, in this microphone, uh, here is QED, QCD, basically not QCD, QED. And QED scale for us is uh, given by mass of the particles. And uh, here the typical mass of the particle which uh, flows here in this in these wires is basically uh, these are electrons. And mass of electrons, if you take the mass of electrons, is 0 0.1, uh, 0.5 MeV, and uh, try to get a typical scale of magnetic field which corresponds to this field, it will immediately get that uh, typical units here will be just given by the mass of electron squared divided by electric charge. And it will give you approximately between 10 to 9, 10 to 10 Teslas. So immediately nine orders of magnitude higher than the loudspeaker magnet. And that's called finger limit. And such magnetic fields, they do exist. Uh, we believe that they do exist at magnetar surfaces. And uh, at those magnetic fields, magnetar is just neutron star, which is highly magnetized. Neutron star, which is rotating very fast, you know, has some uh, magnetic lines inside it, which are squeezed due to magneto. There, there are different mechanisms which can explain that. I wouldn't speculate about that, but it's just, it has approximately this scale from 10 to 8 to 10 to 11 Teslas at the surface. At this magnetic field already vacuum becomes a little bit strange. It acquires uh, so-called vacuum optical birefringent properties. It means that uh, the light which goes uh, uh, through magnetic field will have different velocities or different speeds depending on polarization of, mag of, of, the, of the photon with respect to direction of magnetic field. It can be either higher or slower, and then you will get like uh, this kind of properties, like in the crystal of quartz, you'll get some kind of double images here, depending on polarization of light and so on. But it will happen with the vacuum. Uh, and vacuum can act like magnetic lens, so it can concentrate light or disperse light similar to gravitational lens. So vacuum becomes a little bit like metal. Okay, that's one one stuff. Then we jump next scale. So after QCD, QD, we have QCD. In QCD, the formula is exactly the same. Typical magnetic field, it just uh, uh, should be a typical mass of the particle in this uh, theory. In this case, it's just one proton, basically one GeV squared here divided by electric charge. Uh, and then we get 10 to 16 Teslas. Okay. Such magnetic fields actually were claimed to be observed four days ago, I think it was journal PRX. I think even New York Times wrote about that. They have, in our, in our language, it's 77 MeV. It's a little bit smaller, actually. It's two times smaller than this scale, or two, sorry, two orders of magnitude smaller than this scale, but still, its highest field in the, in the universe exists here on the Earth. Scientists just created new breakthrough, happier life, so you know that what people normally say about in newspapers. But this type of fields has, I mean, fields higher than this one have already been registered in the Earth. So we know this already. And these are QCD scales. So we are approaching QCD scale and they are created in heavy collisions where you have two ions colliding together to form something like quark plasma. So one ion goes here, another ion goes there. 
here we have some kind of vertical fluid which rotates because you have this angular moment of which, 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 which is imposed in, 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 this, in this fluid. So in principle, this stuff is rotating and creating some kind of virals, viral pools, which are, since they're charged, they create magnetic fields, basically like a currents, which create magnetic fields around. And these fields will be 10 to 16 Tesla. The only one problem, they are short-lived. Uh, they live one yoke to second, which is 10 to minus 24 seconds, very short. But we can still, we can measure them using other particles, looking how particles are kind of developed around this plasma. So these 10, these are fields so 10 to 16. There are many interesting effects here, like magnetic catalysis and works magnetic catalysis. There are some speculations about vacuum superconductivity here. I will not talk about this particular effect here, but those effects, but I would like to say that there are some controversies here. We still don't understand what's going on in this plasma, but these are really high fields. Right now, <laughs> we have electric scale. Next step. Electric scale is given by electric particles. An electric typical mass of particle is Okay, it's mass of W boson, it's like, say, approximately 100 GV, a little bit smaller, a little bit higher, depending on what you take, W boson or Higgs mass, which is 125 GV, it's approximately 100 GV. So typical, and then typical magnetic field associated with this scale, mass scale, is again, mass of particle squared divided by electric charge, will be 10 to 20, really high magnetic field. And I'll be talking about this magnetic field. Right now, you can ask people questions. Well, where those magnetic fields can be created? Even not in the experiment, they cannot be there done. And what scientists usually do, they say, oh, it existed a long time ago at early universe. Early universe was a long time ago. We already forgotten about that more than 13 uh, billion years ago. Nobody can check me. I will write it early universe. OK. But unfortunately, here, we, we are here, you know, just and this is just the beginning of the universe, you can find this kind of beautiful pictures also here, this, the corridors, how the universe is created and so on. So uh, here there was, we had not only big magnetic fields, but also big temperatures. And that's actually something which crushes everything. We had plasma, we, we didn't have vacuum. And I would like to talk about vacuum. Fortunately, there are also, right now, we have also some analytical results, which said that in principle, we can have magnetized black holes, which can in principle exist right now, which uh, basically what happened that there was some black hole which was created in the universe. She met uh, beautiful monopoles, ate them, a lot of them become, you know, filled with monopoles. They have lines of magnetic fields going outside. People say that black holes have hair. This hair magnetic lines and uh, magnetic lines were really thick. And then what you get something like that, you have small tiny black hole inside, and then you have something like this, magnetic lines going outside, you have some specific region inside. And uh, I will talk about these regions uh, a little bit later. So the point is the funny thing here that such black holes could in principle exist. Uh, if you take a black hole of the size of, uh, say, of the mass of one third of Earth, then the black hole will be of size of one centimeter of radius approximately. And it will have some kind of very unusual atmosphere created by those magnetic fields I will describe a little bit later. And the funny thing that this guy, Juan Maldacena, who, who is famous in the field, he wrote this paper with this nice picture during 2021, just on the top of COVID. He wrote this corona and said, we have beautiful black holes, another corona. <laughs> People are really happy to see this. We have already too many coronas in our world, forget about it. Here we have black holes. And here are just estimations of magnetic field made by some astrophysicists who say that in principle at some small masses of black holes, uh, you can have some strong magnetic fields there which are uh, which cross some lines which I will discuss later, some critical lines of magnetic fields. So these are fields of 10 to 20 Tesla basically. So we can have such things. Now what we can have, let me just very briefly mention these transparencies. So uh, people discuss uh, superconductivity of vacuum. There are ideas about QCD, which are disputable, which can be, which are very specific ones. I don't touch them. It's related to some magnetic field induced condensation of chromosomes. I will talk right now about things which are, this, this is just question, which is question about one, one paper 10 years ago by me. Basically, 15 years ago, there, were, there are some questions. We don't know whether we have superconductivity at the scale of 10 to 16 Tesla, or we do have the right discussions. However, Motivation of this talk uh, was also of this work was that uh, people discussed that, okay, we surely have some instability of vacuum. It should be a 10 to 20 Tesla, as I said, electric scale. It was old works, 
through to many years ago, and everything should be nice, uh, classical, easy, undisputable. That was kind of statement. Then later, people came and said, in fact, it's not classical, it's totally uneasy, and it's totally disputable. So people say it totally doesn't exist at all. What I said, don't exist. So uh, let me just explain uh, the idea. I will, would like to give very short talk, and I mean very simple talk, and just give very beautiful and describe ideas simply, you know, beautifully, I mean, in a sense, without many formulas, because there are many formulas behind it. The idea is very simple. So you have instability of particles in magnetic field. So what does it mean, instability? OK, you can solve uh, equations of motion, quantum equations of motion in magnetic field. And in the magnetic field, uh, <laughs> particles, sorry, particles, they uh, take uh, energy levels in magnetic field, or it's usually quantum particles have some quanti quantized levels. In magnetic field, they call Landau levels. So you take those Landau levels and say, suppose I have right now three particles with the spin. Particle has some mass m. You put it into magnetic field V. Here, EB is positive. And then particle has some momentum along magnetic field. And what should be the lines of magnetic fields there? Just, OK, lines of particles in magnetic fields. So just particle follow lines of magnetic field. What should be the um, just energy levels of uh, the particle? And this is just formula, which you can get analytically. I will not derive it. So let's say that uh, the energy square root of particle, which moves with momentum Pz along magnetic field uh, with mass m, will have this formula. And here in the middle, you will have magnetic field times electric charge. I took this, as I said, this positive part. And there will be here some numbers. This one is coming from basically from zero point motion of particle. Here, n, no negative number, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, labels Landau levels. And here, Sz is projection of particle, of spin of particle on magnetic field. That's all. So if you take, for example, particle with spin zero, then it will just say that effective mass of the particle here, n equal to zero, lowest one, uh, you can take lowest level. This one is zero. You get here Eb. Eb adds to m squared and gives you kind of mass of the particle. If you put, for example, electrons, you take as z equal to one half. This will be minus one. This will be one. And they cancel each other. And you will get so-called Landau level degeneracy. It gave to many Nobel Prizes, including uh, this quantum Hall effects and Hall effects and so on. So you have some a lot of particles basically with some zero level. If you don't take into account the Zeeman splitting, which is very small in real materials, you can just yeah, say. And then right now we take a z equal to one. Here we have minus two. Here we have one. And you get here minus one. It means that the mass of your particle squared will be given to mass of the particle without magnetic field minus a b. And it means that at some magnetic field, total mass of the particle will become zero. And if you increase magnetic field a little bit more, it will become square root of particle mass will become negative, which means that mass becomes imaginary, which means instability. OK, and that was the idea. Long time ago, people said, wow, perfect. And for magnetic fields of this uh, W bosons, it should be approximately 20 to 10 to 20 Tesla. So there should be some instability, and people say that there should be some W condensation. And this kind of vacuum will become unstable, and bosons will condense. And then, actually, this first idea of this condensation was given by some physicist Kala Zub long time ago. Then Ambir Nolisen appeared there. He published in some Soviet journal. People were forced to publish in Soviet journal. That's why, that's why this paper has, did not, was, not un, un, was not known then in the West. Then Western people came. Then, OK, there were some discussions. And then uh, the interesting point that uh, in this, uh, it turns out that it was realized later that uh, in this particular phase, which we will discuss right now, we will have vacuum, nothing. We, do, we are put magnetic field. And that this nothing will become superconducting. And then you say, well, but you know, in the course of this university, for example, in condensed matter, people say that superconductivity must, kill, must, must be killed by magnetic field. So basically, magnetic field and superconductivity, they don't like each other. So magnetic field uh, try to repel, be repelled by the superconductor. It's called Meissner effect. And if you put too much magnetic field, superconductivity say, oh, sorry, I cannot withstand it, goodbye, and just disappears. You see, so they don't like. Here we say different. We take nothing, we apply magnetic field, and superconductivity will be induced by magnetic field. But it can be checked. What I said can be checked. The point is that there is no Meissner effect here. That's uh, another story, which I would not mention here, but it's really controversial. So the question is, 
many, many controversial things. People discussed long time before. Let's check it. That's, that's basically the idea of this talk. So here there will be some, a few, a few formulas, just not to make you too much sleepy, but just I would like to show what I do that. So we <laughs> consider the simplest model, the simplest electric Lagrangian, which is called uh, the mm, Salom Weinberg part of Lagrangian, which says that we have basically W bosons, massive vector. We have Z bosons, a massive also vector. This is electrically charged, Ws, Z are neutral. We have photon, massless vector, which is electrically neutral, but interacts, uh, uh, brings interaction on, in the um, electromagnetic sector. And we have also Higgs particle, which is massive scalar, which is condensed, that's all. So our particle content is extremely simple. Model is also given by this formula, so we have uh, non-abelian part, uh, W bosons basically, then we have some additional U1 bosons which mix also with the diagonal part of this non-abelian part and give uh, Z boson and photon. We have also Higgs field and we have potential for the Higgs field. It's just basically standard model, simplest one, just a few fields. And then what happens that uh, people discuss, okay, right now we have imagined that you have magnetic field, apply magnetic field to the vacuum of this model, what will happen? So the idea right now is the following. So you have up to some magnetic field, which is uh, 10 to 20 Tesla approximately, you'll have ordinary vacuum. Then you have what I call superconducting vacuum. I will show you a picture how it looks like. And then, uh, and the, yeah, and this transition is given by the mass of W fields, mass of uh, W field, W boson field. And then people speculated that there should be second transition when you cross the mass of the Higgs field, which is electrically neutral, but it still should be in the game because it interacts also with W bosons, with Z bosons together. And then you have symmetry restored vacuum, which appears at the birth of our universe, where you have Higgs field is equal to zero. And this topic was so controversial, so people like uh, Abdul Salam, future Nobel Prize winner, and then uh, Linde, who probably will gain Nobel Prize, maybe due to this inflation, we don't know still. Uh, they speculated it long time ago, in 75, and they were talking differently. There are many, many papers in between who say that this space exists, this space does not exist. So we don't know. So our idea is just to look whether this is correct or this is just uh, only for New York Times and some and forget about that. So just whether we really have this phase diagram. That was our aim. <laughs> so here I briefly flash some transparency showing what we expect from the theory. And take the theory. You look to magnetic field. This is everywhere here is magnetic field in terms of critical magnetic field. We work very close to up. We work very close to this, to this, no, stop. We work very, yes, we work. We try to work here close to this, with this, basically this region, very close to this transition. So we just work here, a little bit higher than critical magnetic field. And then we look to the uh, average of W boson. We see that boson, W boson field is fluctuates close to zero. So it just basically classically it is zero. And then it, this W boson condensate appears. And here there are many lines, they depend on the classical solutions of equations of motion. So they just correspond to different values of Higgs mass because at that time when this paper was written, Higgs only appeared in the literature, but I mean, it appeared before, but measurements were only appeared. So at that time we knew that, okay, it just was like 125 GV. So solid lines correspond to real physical case. So you see that here there is some kind of jump, not kind of non-aliticity in W condensate, it appears indeed. And it, this kind of line corresponds to second order phase transition. It's just kind of not a jump, but jump in the derivative of the condensate. Higgs condensate does not like W condensate. It starts to disappear linearly here. One can see also again, but you notice scale, it's very small scale. Here it appears from nothing. And here it appears from basically from the changes a little bit. Then energy of the vacuum start to go, 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 go down. And here there is something which I mentioned only briefly is called second London equation. If you have superconductivity, you must expect that if you put electric field, then particles will accelerate ballistically. They flow without any uh, dissipation, so they will just kind of accelerate ballistically. So the, if you put electric field, then uh, superconducting current will accelerate in time, so it will just linearly grow. And this coefficient in linear growth here corresponds to uh, density of superconducting pairs in normal superconductivity. And here, this density of superconducting pairs is given basically by W condensate. It just this picture just to ensure that you that we have superconductivity. That's all. I would not touch it too much. And this picture is to show you that we have second order phase transition and superconduction, superconductivity. Okay, it's condensation of W bosons. Now, 
we look to this, it's averaged picture. Now let's see how it looks like in reality. Okay, not reality, in, in so how to solve the equations and what you will get in three-dimensional case. So um, here I show spatial uh, dependence of W condensate as the function of coordinates x1, x2. Magnetic field is direction of x3. So you have condensate which appears, it's solutions of classical equations of motion, from the vacuum. And the critical magnetic field 1% higher than the critical, actually cri actual critical magnetic field. So you have critical magnetic field and then you apply you consider vacuum, you consider vacuum at the magnetic field a little bit higher, 1% higher than critical one. So you can solve things per per perturbatively. And uh, here how vacuum looks like. So you have W condensate. It appears uh, like there are some holes here. Those holes, in fact, correspond to vortices. That's why we call vortices. They will be static in, in classical solutions. So along magnetic fields, they will be kind of static wires of vortices. They will form hexagonal lattice here if you look carefully. And then it, this is just W condensate. And the condensation of charged scalar, oh, this is scalar particle means actually superconductivity. Then if you look to Z condensate, you'll find that Z condensate will become much smaller. It also will appear unexpectedly. It was first time which was found in this paper 10 years ago, approximately. You'll have like this two type of structure, I would say, with many also vortices here. One can show very complicated structure, more complicated than this one. So condensation of W bosons will also introduce condensation of superfluid Z bosons. And on top of that, both of them will try to kill uh, usual uh, Higgs condensate. So this is uh, red line correspond to Higgs condensate without magnetic field. And this, if, when we introduce magnetic field, uh, we see Higgs condensate goes a bit down. And here one can see, I will just mention very briefly, uh, the points where W condensate is small, Higgs condensate try to grow up. And where uh, Higgs condensate is small, then W condensate is big. So they don't like each other. That's just classical questions of motion. Okay, so we get this vacuum. And if you look more carefully, the picture will be more complicated. I will only briefly mention these transparencies. If you look to the vacuum, just make a slice of it, you will see many different vortices. Here are vortices, are superconducting vortices, these big ones. You will have some superfluid vortices, anti-vortices, and picture is far from being uh, hexagonal. So these are hexagonal, this, this big one, superconducting vortices, they form kind of hexagonal pattern. And here is more detailed, not hexagonal, but very complicated picture. So you'll get vacuum, which will become very difficult, I mean, very complicated structure in magnetic field, just with one ingredient, that's all. And if you just uh, try to put their currents, you will see that there will be regions, again, this is just a cross section, there will be regions in the third direction where you have, say, superfluid currents, positive, like red one, negative superfluid currents, just then superconducting currents, which are blue. So, I mean, there will be some very complicated stuff. So it's much, much complicated than you would expect just from the vacuum. Just classical questions of motion. Okay. So, and uh, then what we did, right now I'm coming to numerical simulations, then we'll show some movies. Then what we did, we would like to check that because people said, okay, it doesn't exist, it's too complicated, many fluctuations. So what we did, we just took the space time, discretized it, put it on the computer and make numerical simulations. That's all. That was, looks simple. So we put some, we wrote some lattice, so-called lattice model. This correspond to W bosons, basically this is basically to U1 bosons. There is some mixing between them. There will be here some Higgs potential interaction between the two. We put magnetic field there on top of that. There was some study a long time ago, 25 years ago, which said we, we saw nothing. Guys, what you talk does not exist at all, but they did it at high temperature, so that's why their work was not 100% correct, I would say. But they admit that they try to do this with high temperature. High temperature, this condensate disappears. That's fine thing. And then uh, for us to give a uh, number, so it took us two years to get uh, correct uh, quantities because, you know, classical okay, standard model is standard model. Numbers are given in particle data group. You don't want to take about general things. You would like to speak really about standard model. You need to fix all parameters like mass of Higgs boson, mass of Z boson, mass of W bosons, and we did it with the 1% uh, level. So you need to put your lattice parameters. Lattice parameters are those ones. This, you know, we have five, beta, beta, gamma, beta, y, kappa, lambda, and others. You need to fix them in such a way that they correspond to real standard model. That has, took us two years. 
uh, we took two years of calculations. It was COVID, it was in Russia, Russia, and then finally when we were about to publish paper, uh, sorry, I'm of Ukrainian origin, my family was highly infected, I'm really affected, we are really involved in, in the war in different senses. And uh, the point is that uh, war appeared and then I'm in France, I was professor in Russia, also in distance I had students there, what to do? And I'm Ukrainian, I'm totally pro-Ukrainian, so what to do? And there's a guys who are saying that's what we should do. So after half a year of hesitation, we decided to continue. I resigned from Russian University. Uh, so, but I still have some people there in so-called Cotutel. It's kind of double diploma students. So we have no connection officially, but you could still work because they are still normal people. So we decided to continue. And uh, there are many things which I can say, but it's not scientific one. So I would skip them. So we decided to continue. And we, after half a year of delay, we went there. There was a problem there that uh, we used Japanese computer for the simulations. Japan refused for them to work. We saved some data. So there was many dramatic events, but still we went and uh, it was published as parallel paper. So, but it, I said that in total it took three years, COVID and <laughs> natural disasters and political disasters as well. So uh, we did simulations. Uh, we introduced, uh, we did one thing which is important here to mention, scientific one. We decided not to introduce magnetic field, but so-called hypermagnetic field. In fact, it's magnetic field is the thing uh, which depends very much, which is defined very much in the phase where Higgs symmetry is broken. If your Higgs symmetry is broken, then you can define what's magnetic field. If it's unbroken, you don't know what is magnetic field because it depends on the direction in the axis, uh, um, I mean, direction in the ether space. So we speak it so-called hypermagnetic field, which become automatically magnetic field in the broken phase, but then it becomes things of, of its own in the possibly restored phase. Okay, we did it, and then what we found. So right now, I would like to confront many, many papers in theory with one paper in basically theory, but for principle theory. So what we found? We found that if you take Higgs condensate normalized at one at zero magnetic field, this is magnetic field, the Higgs condensate, first of all, it doesn't change when you apply magnetic field increase, increase, increase. And after you reach some critical temperature, which we call BC1, look to this one picture, this theoretical picture, we start a beautiful linear, uh, I mean, linear descent of Higgs condensate down. Just look here briefly to this um, picture, which I have shown here. This is also his condensate uh, theoretical picture. His condensate also goes down here linearly. So basically, we confirmed naively what I would say uh, theory predicted. So we have linear going down, and then the Higgs condensate disappears here. So we have principle this picture. We have one phase, ordinary vacuum, then something which we would call superconducting vacuum, and then something really seemed to restore vacuum, exactly like Salam, Lin, the tall, long time ago. Nice, beautiful. There is one bad. Uh, normally, when you study phase transitions like uh, water vapor, you know, water or ice, you can measure things which are called susceptibility. So, which means that kind of how fields are fluctuating around, how quantities are fluctuating. And you would expect that susceptibility will show some peak at the transition where water does not know whether I am fluid or I am ice or I am fluid or I am vapor. There are some kind of fluctuations. So, there should be some peaks. We looked to the peaks at the Higgs condensate and we found no peaks. We found one peak here at the intermediate region. But if you have some transition here, you would expect that it should be kind of something like that. Two big peaks. We found nothing. But to us, it's a well, theory is wrong, basically. So we don't see any transition at all. There should be two crossovers. So to summarize very, very quickly, uh, so we really found two transitions. It's predicted, it's predicted by theory. The first transition is lower than predicted. Here, there should be just mw squared. We found 0.7 w squared. But OK, 30% difference, quantum, classical, it's OK, it's not a problem. The second transition was surprisingly exactly as predicted 50 years ago, with 1% difference, basically, but just exactly 0.99. Great precision of mass of the Higgs, perfect. But then there is an interesting point. For the strength of the transition, the classical, exp classical expectations say that there should be transition of the second order. Quantum people came, there are many papers, I cite only one, said, no, 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 there should be either no transition, so just no, no change, no phases, just one, one big phase, or there should be transition very strong one of the first order. We came and we found that there is no transition at all, it's just of the infinite order. So we do have different phases, contrary to many papers in, in the literature and, and the theoretical part. 
but those, but we still have transition, but this transition of infinite order. So classical theory says two, uh, quantum theory says one, and we say, no, no, it should be infinite. That's how theoretical physicists understand each other, right? <laughs> so that's, that's our, our life, basically. So yeah, so reality is like that. That's one thing. Another thing, you can say that um, what should be the structure of the theory? You expect this beautiful, nice hexagonal picture. So here, what's written here is that, just again, this is Higgs condensate, this line. This one uh, line, which corresponds basically to average action of the theory, that's uh, to ensure one of referee, if you're interested in this referee, C, who really did not want to publish our paper, he said, okay, what you write again is nothing, beep, you know, it's just, you should throw out it because it's not gauge invariant. We had to, uh, basically, we have to ensure referee that uh, the thing is gauge invariant. So we put here expectation value of gauge invariant quantity, which for some people is important to see that what we do is gauge invariant thing, it's a real vacuum. So it's uh, it means that we have beautiful, you know, kind of interacting uh, twisted picture. And what's shown here are time slices, basically, of our configurations. In particular, here I show so-called Z flux, but you can choose many different values, it will look the same. So they show that if you increase magnetic field uh, in this area, in this region, nothing really interesting happens. There are many fluctuations. As long as you cross the first line, you will see some structures which appear, which appear there, which form like vortices, actually, because it's cross-section, it should be vortices, which look like this, you know. You see, they don't form the crystal, the dimensional crystal, but they form kind of, you know, some kind of disordered structure. But still, it's, they have points. There, right? They have some points, so they look like, a, to me, it looks like a liquid or disordered solid. I would say that later I will show some YouTube video, which we put the, put the internet. Fortunately, ah, yeah, and I would like to say that I got my computer broken by a French company. So that's why I'm talking, I gave this seminar in Japan, and I, fortunately I sent PDF. That's why I gave it to Gabriele to download it. <laughs> she took it. And fortunately, French and the rest, where I work, they force us, because I'm director de recherche, I'm kind of responsible for some students. I have to promote what we do. So I had to upload some videos, give some general public courses and so on. So I uploaded some video to YouTube. Unfortunately, it's there. So that's why we couldn't, I could show you video because with PDF, you cannot show videos. And <laughs> that's why I will show you something YouTube, maybe with some advertisement from YouTube of some, sorry? Hopefully not, we will see some dress, some maquillage, you know, we will see. Yeah, so, and then you introduce, and then you see that uh, vortices will appear, there will be more and more vortices here, they are quite big, but noisy. Here there are a number of them becomes bigger, they become smaller, but number become bigger. And finally, they, what I say, evaporate at zero temperature, but they evaporate due to magnetic field. You will see this evaporation in this YouTube video. And then finally, we get again noisy picture here. So vacuum is quite beautiful, right? So we have some really kind of uh, classical kind of picture, but it's not exactly classical. It looks like not a crystal, but it looks like a fluid or liquid. Yeah. Okay, there should be video here. I will show you later. So that's uh, this video. And if you then compare, that's a very brief picture. I'm basically finishing. Um, if you compare here the classical theory, actually, it's a lot of work here. So this is, for example, W condensate. Uh, blue parts correspond to low values and uh, orange part correspond to high values. And uh, these are uh, red and uh, green points, uh, green, green regions here. They show exactly the same region in all pictures because it's difficult to guide the eye. So that's why I basically put them at the same region at the same pictures by the same color. So here you see we have kind of depressions in the W condensate and then bigger value of it here, far away forming like this hexagonal type of pattern. Here we have this more final, finer um, res result structures which appear from Z condensate, which is superfluid condensate. This is superconducting, this is superfluid. Then you get some fluctuations of Higgs condensate, which tries to live where you have a uh, less number of W condensate than Higgs condensate try to be enhanced there. And then you have here magnetic field. Now there is a shocking thing which actually make all uh, superconducting physicists uh, saying that, okay, what you write does not exist. Because of a very simple thing, if you come to persons here who work in condensed model department and say to them, guys, you know, I take type two superconductor. Or first of all, they say that this picture is type two superconductor, very typical. You apply magnetic field, some superconductor says, oh, I'm sorry, I cannot withstand it. I'm just become normal, not superconducting. That's type one. There is type two, which say, oh, no, no, I can still a little bit survive, but I will allow for my for magnetic field to penetrate in terms of this kind of um, hexagonal type of structure, of, you know, vortex type of structure. 
that's we have mixed so-called Abrikosov phase, which is Nobel Prize again for Abrikosov. Yeah, so it has a mixed phase of vortices. And the interesting point is that magnetic field penetrates exactly through the vortices. Where magnetic field penetrates superconductor, vortices get formed, and uh, there you have restoration of phase. So superconductivity does not exist at the center of vortex, but magnetic field does exist. Here, if you look carefully to this picture, where magnetic field is enhanced, and this picture, where W condensated formed, you'll see that the magnetic field is suppressed where W condensate suppressed. And here, for example, this region where W superconducting condensate enhanced, magnetic field is also enhanced. So magnetic field penetrates in the region where you do have superconductivity. It's totally opposite to what, that's me, that's totally opposite what would people get it uh, from usual type to superconductor. That's why uh, many people say, no, 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 it doesn't exist, and it's your theoretical dreams, forget it. That's big controversy. And right now, we, as I said, we can have it in the black holes. So it's quite interesting. Now let's do simulation. Simulations, we basically recover the same picture, but things become a little bit noisy. So instead of one very beautiful point here, we have some, you know, some blurry region, just because vortex moves a little bit and just, you see. But generally, structure is like that. Here, if you look to Z condensate, you will see that, again, things are blurry, but you have these worms, which are thinner than those ones, which indeed remind a little bit of this picture. So here we have kind of thick regions between vortices. Here we have thinner regions with many points. Here we have something similar. And exactly, if you check one by one picture, you'll see that correspondence between the uh, the same modulo, some vortices are a little bit moving. I will show that in the video. So they're a little bit moving here. And here should be kind of superconducting phase. I will show you later in the video. So if you, if you decide to visualize it in 3D, you can put here W condensate and the Higgs condensate. So W is blue, Higgs condensate is um, uh, green. And uh, red here is the case where W condensate is suppressed. So you will see, or sorry, enhanced here, it's just enhanced. So you see that Higgs condensate and W condensate doesn't like each other. They appear in the different regions. And that's how three-dimensional configuration look like. So it's, it's clearly not crystal here because there are vortices which are more or less random here, but they are parallel to magnetic field. Magnetic field is up direction. So it's not okay with the theory, but more or less kind of fine. So you don't have, uh, one can check that vortices don't twist, they form, but theoretically, they should be ordered like this. In reality, they are wiggling a little bit. So that's that's what happens in, in our experiment. I'm basically finishing it right now. And yeah, that that's, that's, doesn't matter, just one of the pictures. So I would like to say that this uh, picture which I have shown is given by exactly at physical coupling. So you have W boson of physical mass, Higgs boson of physical mass, Z boson of physical mass. If we a little bit change parameters, which we usually call change dub, so-called Weinberg angle, then <laughs> you will see completely different structure of uh, your vacuum. So for example, here we changed, uh, I forgot here, I think it was so-called semi-clocal limit, I think when theta is equal to pi over two, so different one, and you'll see that vortices, they form basically hexagonal lattice. One can check it's hexagonal. But in reality, in the real picture, we should expect something different. So right now I'm making conclusion, and then I will show some video. So. Uh, so basically what we found, uh, we found a phase structure of zero temperature electric theory, so basically for the vacuum, at the fields of 10 to 20 uh, in Kelvin, the, not temperature, uh, magnetic field at, temp at the level of 10 to 20 Tesla, so very high, zero temperature, temperature just zero, nothing. Vacuum is nothing, basically vacuum fluctuations, that's all. We recovered this phase diagram predicted by the theory. We found superconducting vacuum, 100%. Uh, we found that approximately first order phase transition and second order phase transition should be the same, apart from the fact that they should not be phase transition, they should be crossovers. So everything is smooth. So that's that's basically what I said here. So it's not it's, we have some gas of vortices here. The funny thing that if you like right now look lower at lower magnetic fields to the QCD scale, like 10 to 16, what people approximately find is super, super, those uh, super colliders. Then uh, here there is also prediction that we can find also some kind of superconductivity, but people cannot find it. If you do lattice like simulations, you couldn't find it. For us, it took three years, basically, modulo all external events, to find this transition in the theory where some people said 100% you must have this phase. Some people said 100% you shouldn't have anything. But anyway, there are many works, and it was basically a classical phenomenon. And this we really invest a lot of time to find it. So it was really difficult. So I hope that in QCD we also can have something like that. 
And right now, I try to use my skills probably to. If I can. Really, I hope that I will do. Yes, so this is video. Uh, let me just very, very briefly show you this video. OK, let me just start it. So that's video. That's actually basically here. Let me show you. Ah, that's, that's, that's my video. That's as usual, you know. That's video to understand. Uh, this, uh, no, please. Please, 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 please. Just, uh, OK. OK, this time. So this understand. So the size of the regions which I have shown you here, it's compared to this size of proton. So if you take proton, it's this boundary of the proton. I'm talking, I was talking about this type of distances. So proton is approximately one Fermi, 10 to minus 15 meters. And I was talking about 10 to minus 16 meters. It's part of the proton. So to understand the scales about the effects, what I'm talking about, right? So just about small size of the proton. So all those events will be about this. Then I will skip exactly about what we, I was talking about here. OK, so here let me just come at this point. So what we do here is just, uh, <coughs> so this is video, how we see our configuration. So these are our configurations here. And uh, I hope that, yeah, so that's how we see them. You see these vortices uh, which are moving in configurations. So we see that they are not a crystal at all because the crystal they are standing and here they are moving similar to a fluid. But please notice uh, here in what I have shown here. So they are moving, but they are moving like it looks like they are moving like in the fluid, but it's not a fluid because in fluid the vortices or points can interchange themselves. Here they are standing kind of they are moving inside everything moves inside its own cell. So it's like a solid because it moves inside the own so own cell. It's like solid, but on the other hand, it's not a solid because it moves. So it's like a fluid or a liquid, right? So it's neither fluid nor solid, so it's something in between. So you found this type of vacuum structure. It's a kind of presentation video. And here to start a little bit the thing. So we found that we have ordinary vacuum. Then at 10 to 20, we have the first transition, which is not first transition. Then we have superconducting vacuum, which is made again of this disordered fluid-like solid of vortices. You see, I said fluid-like solid of vortices. It's made from vacuum. It's really controversial. And then we have second transition, which is uh, where this exotic vacuum state evaporates and Higgs condensate is destroyed. So it's really something which is very strange, I would like to say, and unexpected. And then here what I show, here I show this plot. Here this line will move right now. This is first transition. There will be then second transition. Here we assume that uh, we should have this vortex solid. And this line will move. So in principle, I will just right now start to increase magnetic field here drastically, and I will show how configuration look like in general. So that's basically our configurations which we see on the lattice. So we move here, right? And then we come to this uh, phase where we have the vortices and you see they are just moving here. These are real numerical simulations. They're moving, everyone moves within its own cell. So just one configuration by configuration. And vortices become thinner, thinner as we increase magnetic field. They become more kind of dizzy, I would like to say. And then at the end they evaporate. So as we move to the third phase, they become more chaotic and then finally again they disappear. That's the results of our numerical first principle simulations and I don't know. And then if you check, we did not make, I'm pretty sure that we made no mistake here, uh, but it was far as very unexpected. And then again, I show you the picture I have shown you before, this is three-dimensional configuration. I will make it a bit naked. I will remove part of the, of the stuff here and I will show you how it looks like from inside. So we have this configuration, now we rotate it. We remove right now W condensate and right now you see uh, uh, Higgs condensate only. You see it looks vortex-like structure here which is not actually solid, but it's a little bit wiggling around. And then you will see here is, these are our, yeah, this is another work. Uh, these are basically Higgs condensate around and W vortex condensate. So yeah, so this is basically the paper. That's another paper, which is, you can also look, but it's different, it's about rotation that YouTube presents. So basically I'm finishing my talk saying that you can make from vacuum solid vortex. No, 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 no. No, no, not the guy, no, no, no. Very nice, I like it. Very nice, later. <laughs> nice advertisement. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a danger of YouTube video, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so that's what you see, that we can get this kind of vortices uh, from the vacuum. Basically, from nothing, you get fluid, solid, uh, liquid, disordered solid, which is superconducting, superfluid at the same time, made from vacuum, just, and it can exist maybe around black holes. So that's what we see. 
despite of our geopolitical and you know sanitary problems, we've managed to publish that, and we're happy about this. Uh, and we work right now further. We would like right now to see whether we do have uh, do this stuff at the black holes, because in principle, <coughs> I, strong, sorry, I strongly believe that we can have we can have some radio um, uh, signatures of that, because vortices, they're hairs. As you see, they are moving. The, the, the close to black holes, you may have Hawking radiation, which make uh, them a little bit hotter. They will move, but since they are magnetic stuff, they are electromagnetic stuff, they should emit radiation. When they emit radiation, this radiation uh, will be very hard. It will be like you can imagine 10 to 20 Tesla. It's really something which is approximately like 50, 100 dV. It will, it will go outside, but since it's black hole. Radiation will have some retardation, not retardation, but basically elongation, red shift. And then if you will see far away, you will see this uh, motion of hair. Uh, you will see it like uh, basically like the um, radio radiation. So you should expect some radio radiation. So that's in the, one of the projects probably we can detect such events, such kind of effects. Voila, so I'm, I'm finished. Thank you.